Hello, and welcome to a new edition of Transparency in Government. I'm here again with our town manager, Kevin Smith. Kevin, it's nice to see you. Donnie, nice to see you too. It's been a little while. It has been a little while. I mean, we had a little flood over here at this facility. I don't know how many people were aware of that. Yeah, probably not many were aware of it. Um, just to give the folks at home a, mm -hmm. a little update on why we haven't been on the air in a yeah. while. We had a water main uh, burst uh, here in the facility and it very well could have been an unmitigated disaster. Um, yeah if it wasn't for um, our cable director, Drew Karen, mm -hmm. uh, being here at the time when it, it burst yep. uh, early in the morning, uh, the quick response by the fire department uh, coming over. And uh, I know he was very pleased with all of the help he got from the other town employees. Yeah, it was a team effort. They did a great job. And then working with uh, Steve Cotton in mm -hmm. town yeah. really got everything fixed, um, you know, cleaned up and fixed in mm -hmm. a very short amount of time yeah. so that uh, here we are operational again. Um, so it, it could have been, as I said, it could have been a huge, mm -hmm. huge problem. It wasn't because of the work of the town employees and uh, very, very thankful mm -hmm. about that. And we got to see how those crews come in and fix your house after it floods. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so they, they yep. were doing a lot of work over here for quite a while. Yeah. Um, I know, like I said, Drew was very, very thankful for all of the town employees who's, who jumped in and helped. Sure. And it just shows what great employees you have. Absolutely, very <laughs> lucky. Yes. Um, I think what we'll do is start off by talking about exit 4A seeing how it's been a while since we've been together, and that's hit the newspapers again. Yeah, so um, this has been a kind of a hot button issue as of late, uh, and to, uh, I guess, give a very brief synopsis mm -hmm. of where we, are now. where we are with it. So folks might remember that uh, last fall, actually last September, the Department of Transportation, New Hampshire Department of Transportation, um, solicited both the towns of Derry and Londonderry mm -hmm. to turn over the project management of 4A to, to the, the state. state so the state could run with it because really towns aren't in the business of building state highways. highways. No. Uh, Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness is right. Um, so, But it had been a town project up until that time. Mm -hmm. The state recognized that they were widening I-93 and it would make sense to build 4A at the same time they're widening 93. That sounds sensible. Uh, so things were <laughs> on the right track. Uh, there was an MOU, a draft MOU uh, clarifying... Memorandum yeah, of Understanding. Clarifying yep. roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. of, of every, all the parties. Uh, and then the Commissioner of Transportation resigned. Um, nobody filled his place and um, this all kind of went into a black hole. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear much from DOT for a while and uh, then when we finally did hear from them what we heard was that this project was no longer on the state's 10-year highway plan <laughs> and that there was no funding for it either. This after funding had specific funding for 4A for, for had been set say. aside. <laughs> Um, in uh, legislatively a couple mm -hmm, of years ago mm -hmm. as part of the funding bill for widening I-93. Uh, so at that point, um, we expressed our displeasure to mm -hmm, DOT, mm -hmm. to the uh, executive council, and to the governor. And um, long story short, the good news is all of the parties agree now this needs to be done at the same time 93 is being mm -hmm. widened. It needs to be accelerated as part of the 10-year plan, uh, and uh, the funding is there for it. Good, okay. The governor... They found it. <laughs> they miraculously found it, Dottie. Amazing. Imagine that. The governor came out strongly in support of 4A. Mm -hmm. DOT has said it's a priority of theirs, uh, and now we'll actually uh, be meeting next month okay. um, to go over all of it and... Um, and uh, Will they give move, you, move. give you like on the 10-year plan, will they let you know then what year you're in? Yeah, they will. And okay. what the plan now is, as I said, it's to do it concurrently as they're widening I-93, mm -hmm. uh, especially around the exit four mm -hmm. area. That makes the most sense. You wouldn't widen 93, complete the project, and then come back years later to put the exit Oh, I in. don't know. Some people want <laughs> Doesn't, that's, I'm just that, hoping that whatever happens with 4A doesn't take as long as it did to reconstruct the whole area by exit 3. 
Uh, well, it's not an easy thing to do when you're putting in new exits or reconstructing existing mm -hmm. exits. Um, you know, the, the exit four reconstruction, a lot of people may not realize, but all oh. of exit four is being reconstructed. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the bridges are being widened. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of work for a, a couple of years yeah. in that area. Um, may cause some traffic headaches for mm -hmm. a time. Um, but that hole is, and it, and it takes a while to, look at exit five. Yeah. You know, they were working on exit five for a, a long, long time, time before it got completed. Yeah. So I think the completion date is uh, 2019, 2020 mm -hmm. um, is what they're looking at uh, for it. And again, exit 4A is slated now to be a part of that. And we'll certainly do everything on our end to um, push the state along and getting it done. Yeah. Um, but we're happy to see that they're now on board with this and, and ready to move forward. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And we'll keep this on the list for updates as we go forward. Absolutely. Um, okay. What's going on with the CIP? I saw some good news about the uh, central fire. Well, on the plan. it's, you know, projects, uh, the CIP every year, the planning board, uh, and the CIP committee go mm -hmm. through a process of... Yeah, maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit for yeah, people who CI are not aware of CIP how it works. CIP stands for Capital Improvement uh, Process, okay. Projects, mm -hmm. and uh, it's basically the, the immediate needs of the town mm -hmm. for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually there's a list of different ones, the Senior Center, Central mm -hmm. Fire, the auditorium's been on it and then they're ranked by priority and necessity. And those projects come forward usually in the recommendation of? Uh, well, this, the recommendation of the department heads, mm -hmm. the CIP committee mm -hmm. are the ones yeah. who finalize it. And mm -hmm. again, the planning board uh, also has a hand now in the, the process CIP, as well. the CIP, that's an appointed committee. It is. Okay. Yep. So it's, um, you know, they've, they've determined that central fire Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a necessity to, to do something there, whether it's put an addition on to retrofit uh, the current structure. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what they've recognized is it's, it's an it's not older adequate. building. It's not adequate now to, to serve the needs of the community. Mm -hmm. And something's going to have to be done at some point. Yeah. When that's done, I'm not sure yet. You know, a lot of it depends on when we put something like that in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's on there as a priority right now. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, that that mean, was I know probably, there are other probably things, the, most, yeah. the most pressing, pressing? one pressing? Okay. Uh, was that one. You know, mm -hmm. the, the senior center um, frequently gets attention mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, they're still operating out of the Grange building, but that program mm -hmm. is... Uh, uh, the old Mayflower Grange up in the, the north, north part of end, town. Yeah. Um, but that program continues to grow. It so, does. And we've done some repairs to, to that building over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's some sewer projects as well uh, on the CIP um, that we're looking to get done over, over the next five years, some upgrades to our sewer mm -hmm. infrastructure. Well, I think the, the great thing about the CIP is how it does keep all of those important needs Oh, we're, we're aware of them. Absolutely. Otherwise, different ones get lost along the way. Right. Kind of like the state. No, sorry. Um. <laughs> no, it does. It's the, if for nothing else, the planning process is a good one because mm -hmm. it does help keep those items on the forefront right. and, yeah. and makes us aware that they are mm -hmm. out there. You know, we had the public works garage was on the CIP for a while. Yeah. And of course we funded that a couple of years ago and now they have a, a beautiful new building mm -hmm. up there mm -hmm. um, that is a lot more habitable than the yeah. former building <laughs> exactly. uh, was. Definitely. Okay. Um, how about contaminated wells? Been having some issues with those in town? Yeah, well, so, and people may have read uh, about this as well. Um, you know, there was a, a lawsuit, a settlement years ago um, between the state of New Hampshire and a lot of the um, uh, oil companies mm -hmm. for um, putting <clears throat> MBTE into the, the groundwater. And so out of that settlement came a lot of money to the state. Mm -hmm. The state now has a program that's it's funded at the state level where they can they send folks out to potentially contaminated areas mm -hmm. um, to do well water tests. Testing. It's voluntary whether or not you want the state to test your mm -hmm. well. 
Um, but uh, the state recently did this in the area of Charleston Ave um, by the Tinkham property mm -hmm. okay. um, and you know behind behind Route 102 in, along Gilcrest mm -hmm. in that area uh, and what they found was some higher levels of um, contaminants in some of the well water and so okay. uh, they did have a, um, a meeting recently with anyone who wanted to attend to talk about what the the next steps would be mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. um, you know potential mitigation for it, you know you no Is, one's isn't it likely that it would you would need to bring water lines up there? Well, and that's that's been one of the things mm -hmm. that uh, you know is being talked about right now is is providing the public water to that area yeah. and to to tie folks into it, um, you know as a as a sh surefire way to to mitigate. Any contaminants. Well, it doesn't seem like it would help to dig another well. Uh, they might, if they're there in the right. ground, they could be leaching into the new well. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to pretend to be a water specialist. Oh, me either. I just know. drink it. So I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, same here. Though it's it's not a bad practice to get your well tested. Um, you know, most of Londonderry are mm -hmm. residents are on well water. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, it's just it's it's good practice to have it tested uh, if you want to be sure that okay my my drinking water safe mm -hmm. and it's yeah. you know it doesn't have any high levels of any kinds of contaminants mm -hmm. in it and if folks want to do that they can go on the DES website environmental services website there's recommendations for um, I think different organizations that will, will help test that. your water. I think there's one out of dairy that'll mm -hmm. that'll do it. And then, as I said, it's it's up then to it's all voluntary, and whatever mitigation methods you want to take after that is up to the the property owner. Okay. So if someone did test a well, discovered yep. that it was contaminated, contacted the state for more information on how to what they can do about yep. that, would one option be that the state will help them as an individual? I don't know okay. the answer to that, Dottie. It's possible that they might. You no, know, I love it I that you can say I don't know. Well, it doesn't get stuck. Yeah, I like that. you know, it's. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think this fund that was created mm -hmm. may have money to help homeowners out. Okay. Because it's not always the mitigation isn't always cheap. Right. Um, I'm thinking a neighborhood. You know, to do a whole neighborhood versus. Yeah. One person would be right, but I. So it, the answer is there may be money set aside, mm -hmm. but if if anyone wants to know, you know, all of the answers, mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend they call DES, okay. talk to them, and see what is available mm -hmm. to help a homeowner out. Sounds like a good idea. Yes. Okay. Um, now I was interested in this is this is one from me, uh, the school board took a vote to support the new TIF? Yes. Or Tax Increment Financing, financing district. district. Yes. Why isn't it TIFD? <laughs> oh, I don't know, Dottie. You know, I'm asking TIF the hard questions here. TIF is easier to say than I don't know. <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah, so, the uh, town council, of course, we have one TIF uh, in place already that'll uh, terminate at the end of this year. Right. Okay. Uh, and it's important to, to, I think, point out too that when communities create TIFs, there's different ways you can utilize them. Mm -hmm. The most common way is uh, a TIF is set up and then a community would typically bond a, a project, a public infrastructure project, and the incremental tax revenue that comes in would pay off the bond okay could be over many years mm -hmm. um, we didn't do that as a town uh, because we didn't want to put the town into the red mm -hmm. so what we've done instead is we've had uh, development agreements with the private developers and landowners to say look at to help facilitate development in the mm -hmm. area um, what we'd be willing to do is reimburse a developer. So they pay all the upfront costs. Okay. We'll reimburse them for a portion mm -hmm. of the infrastructure needs in the mm -hmm. area from the incremental tax revenue that comes in. Okay. So for instance, we did that with Penton Gill Road. Yeah. We were on the hook for a quarter of a million dollars to build the traffic lights. Um, as of this December, that'll be paid off. Mm -hmm. So we put the TIF in place in the fall of 2013 it's now the end of 2015 and that's that's done. Okay. So it only took two years. <clears throat> and what do we get in return for it? Well, we get reoccurring revenue of about $1.2 million. 
That sounds That's good. not a bad deal. No. Nope. And, and close to $90 million in, in new valuation. Mm -hmm. Very similarly, that's what this next TIF will do. Okay. So when the current one terminates, this new one will open up. Again, it'll help pay for infrastructure costs through mm -hmm. reimbursing the developers uh, in that area. The reason the school board had to weigh in on it is by state law, uh, the county commissioners and the local school districts have to be given an opportunity to weigh in because the money you're essentially holding back mm -hmm. and giving to, you know, making reimbursements with, uh, that, that is town tax revenue, it's county tax revenue, and it's school tax revenue. Okay. So that's why they all have to be given a, oh, okay. a voice in this. Um, but as you see, the, the school board unanimously supported it, supported it yeah. because, mm -hmm. as I said, now uh, in, in this year's mm -hmm. valuation, we're starting to reap the benefits of the first TIF. Everyone sees how successful it was. It's, yeah. And this next one is going to be, I, I think, just as successful okay. because we already know what developments are coming in the pipeline. Um, they're significant. One of them already has conditional approval. Mm -hmm. It's a manufacturing company. So here, we, I know this is one of your other issues, so we'll go right into it. Okay. It's a manufacturing company. They're publicly traded mm -hmm. based out of California. Mm -hmm. They do have a presence in New Hampshire already, mm -hmm. but they're looking to expand that presence. About 500 jobs. Initial build out is 200,000 square feet uh, with a, a full build out of 300,000 square feet. Um, they're a, they're a big company, uh, and I can't. But they're a mystery. Uh, they are a mystery still, and I can't reveal yet who they are, uh, because they are still putting the final touches uh, on the lease agreement with the airport. Because oh, okay. the land they're going on is owned by Manchester Airport, mm -hmm. so. Uh, they have a lease agreement with the airport, mm -hmm. but it's not quite completed yet. Okay. So they haven't announced it uh, publicly, so we're not going to announce it publicly. But either. they're building on Lon the Londonderry land. It's it's in Londonderry, okay. but the land itself is owned by the airport. Okay. So much like Manchester Airport, mm -hmm. Manchester Airport's in Londonderry, but this the city of Manchester owns that that land. Okay. Um, same with this. So they're leasing the land from Manchester Airport, but they'll be paying taxes to Londonderry. Why? <laughs> because they're in Londonderry. Okay. So, so the city of Manchester, the land that they own, mm -hmm. they don't pay taxes to Londonderry for that land because the state law says one municipality can't tax another, another municipality. One, right. So they don't pay us for taxes on the land, but whoever they lease the land to, any improvements on that land, mm -hmm. we tax them and they pay us, okay. the town of Londonderry, while also paying the city of Manchester for their lease agreement, mm -hmm. for the, the ground lease. So that's one company going up there. Okay. South of that, right off of that. And, and just, just to expand just a little yep. bit on, on why it has to be a mystery at this point, you said they haven't finalize the lease agreement if they made this public yeah. would there be pressure to cause them to have to pay more money than they would otherwise no or? i don't think so but you know, i think what, they want to have the, i think it's just a matter of wanting to dot all the i's cross all the t's before they publicly announce that here they are here they are okay yeah i think they they want the signed mm -hmm. lease agreement mm -hmm. in hand mm -hmm. it's 99 percent there um but it, they still mm -hmm. have to put the final signatures on it. Now, how much influence over the project will our um, planning board have? Well, they've already given conditional approval. Okay. So um, there's a few conditions they still have to meet. They mm -hmm. will have those things tidied up probably uh, by the end of the month. I would expect to see them uh, starting construction in early December before the snow flies. Mm -hmm. Or oh, well, this hopefully. isn't wood, but... <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. We're in El Nino right now, so okay. everything I hear says the snow is going to hold off for a little bit. Uh, I'm not a weather expert either, by the way. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so the planning board's already given conditional mm -hmm. approval to them. Um, the other company, we have another company that is in the pipeline. 
um, that they are also in the final stages of their okay. lease also agreement. Also a mystery. Okay. Um, they this uh, company is a it's a well known company. Uh, they are looking to build a million square foot facility uh, in uh, in Londonderry off of Pentongill Road. Uh, it would be one of the largest facilities in the state of New Hampshire, if not the largest. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there aren't very many million square foot buildings big. in the state. Um, and so we're very excited about that. Um, that again is still remaining a mystery at this point, <laughs> um, but people should be hearing about it pretty soon. And uh, it'll, it'll be another great get for, mm -hmm. for Londonderry. Okay. So almost overnight, we'd, we're gonna be doubling the valuation of that area, uh -huh. of what currently exists up there. And I can't emphasize it strongly enough that without these TIF districts, th these companies would not be there because they have other places that they can move to. Um, that might be more accommodating? Well, not that they're more accommodating, but the land is, is less value. So it's not costing them uh, I as see much. What you're saying. Okay. They, would, they would love to be in London area, mm -hmm. they love the location, mm -hmm. but they can't pay through the roof. To be here either. Okay. So by us, you know, helping them out a little bit mm -hmm. on infrastructure costs that are going to be public infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, it makes it a lot more palatable for them, and then you have that annual revenue coming mm -hmm. in every year. And again, the reimbursements in this case will will be paid off in pretty much two years. Great. Um, so it's, yeah, it's it's exciting. Okay. And it's great to see it all come into fruition. That's great. I can't yes. wait to hear what the mystery reveals. All right. Next <laughs> show. Everybody's, uh, okay. That would be great. That would be great. Okay. Um, let's see. I did that one right. The, uh, can't read my own writing. Okay. Town forest versus town park. I know this is a very emotional issue for people. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the status of that discussion at this point? So back in 1984, I was seven years old. Dottie. I was going to say you were a baby. And you were 18 uh, oh, at yeah. the time. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the citizens of Londonderry voted at that time to authorize uh, the town forest. By the way, people don't know where the town forest is. It's right behind the town common. Some folks don't know where the town forest is. Uh, it's a small forest. I was going to say it's because it's a very presumptuous description. Yes, yes it is. Um, but the voters decided in 1984 to authorize a conservation commission mm -hmm. to manage the town forest. It's mm -hmm. town-owned land. Conservation commission manages it, and they have up until this time. There's been a lot of talk as of late, a lot of groups meeting to say, let's try to make it a more usable space. Mm -hmm. And they've done that so far by putting trails mm -hmm. into the town forest. If, if people haven't been through, there's wide trails in there. Yeah. There's a number of them. They're great to walk through, mm -hmm. bring your dog through, whatever. There's benches in there. Uh, but there's this whole idea of let's, let's maybe try to make the town common more usable. Let's make the town forest more walkable. Mm -hmm. um, but at what point does it go from being a town forest to being more park-like. Mm -hmm. Not entirely cleared, but just more usable space mm -hmm. in there. And what Conservation Commission has said is, if you want to make it into a more of a park than a forest, that's fine, but we're not in the business of managing parks. Right. You know, we'll manage the, mm -hmm. the forest, but yeah. not parks. Yeah. So if the town yeah. decides to go in that direction, the management should probably go to some other entity. Mm -hmm whether it's Yet back to, to the determined. town manager's office or, mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. Yeah. So one of the things that the council recently asked me to look into is if we did turn management from uh, the Conservation Commission to the town manager's office, mm -hmm. would that take a, a vote of the, the people in March? Could the town council yeah. unilaterally decide to do it? Mm -hmm. But what would it take? So I've got the the town attorney currently looking into that. But okay. I think you'll continue to hear more discussion about this, you know, over the ensuing months and mm -hmm. years uh, about how, how to make it more of a, a user-friendly mm -hmm. uh, space there. Because it's, it's a beautiful space. People, though, I think are reluctant to use it because you got to park on the other side of the street. Find parking, <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, there is parking around, but, you mm -hmm. know, you got to, if you have young kids, you got to cross either Mammoth Road 
or Pillsbury. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of folks maybe don't even, aren't even aware of, yes. you can go behind the town common, go into the town forest, mm -hmm. and there are trails there that mm -hmm. lead down to the apple orchards. It's a, it's a great walk. Yeah. Um, so hopefully with some of the press coverage and talking about it more, it's mm -hmm. drawing more, yeah. more people's attention to it. Okay. I think it sounds great. It, it seems to me like making it more usable would address an issue that I think we, we have in town because of the fact we were grouped together with other towns originally. When we got split off, Derry got a main street. Londonderry did not oh, have right. a main yeah. street. So right. the, the places to socialize, to gather, to whatever, are kind of minimal. Right. Yep. So one of the reasons why we were going to do a dog park. There you Why go. Why didn't I ask you about the dog park? Have you found me a piece of land yet? We're still looking, for Dottie. Committee? Still on the radar. Okay. I wasn't going to put you on the spot, but just kind of flowed that way. Okay. So that sounds like it's a discussion that we will keep coming back and revisiting. Sure. So, of course, we have to update everybody on Woodmont because we have not been together for I weeks. I know. Right. So is it almost done? Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, Woodmont's not almost done. Oh, wow. But it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely moving. Uh, things are moving. So anyone that's been up to Market Basket recently will see a lot of trucks up there. Mm -hmm. um, they, they got approvals to st start the first phase, which is really a redevelopment of the current shopping plaza. Okay. So what have they gotten approval for? They got approval to knock down the old building. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie's Hallmark and the liquor store are going to move over to the other side next to the okay. new market basket. Okay. okay. So that whole building's coming down. Annie's and uh, liquor store move mm -hmm. over. The liquor store's going to be 10,000 square feet. It's going to be a huge liquor store. Of course. Um, <laughs> and then they're. At least it's not on a highway. Yeah. And then they're adding to it. Uh, TJ Maxx mm -hmm. is going to move over there from the Shaw's Plaza. Ah. Home, Home Goods is moving over there as really? well. Really? And Olympia Sports. Uh, so they're all moving next to uh, the existing current market basket. Okay. okay. On the other side of the parking lot, okay, so kind of facing all of those buildings, but way mm -hmm. on the other side of the parking lot as you first come up Garden Lane, mm -hmm. will be uh, four pad sites. Uh, probably a, a bank, some restaurants, uh, and something else. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a, a, a redevelopment of the existing mm -hmm. plaza. It's really going to get a facelift. Then there's phase two, and phase two is going to be coming in very close behind. Uh, I would expect it to be in design review at staff um, before the end of the year so that they can get all of their approvals and start construction uh, in the very beginning of the spring, mm -hmm. as soon as the ground thaws. What is phase two? Phase two will be uh, the boulevard, going the four-lane boulevard mm -hmm. that will go all the way from the existing garden lane up to Pillsbury. Um, if people drive up to Market Basket right now, they'll see a lot of the trees are gone. Mm -hmm. You can actually see through to Pillsbury now on the other side. So that's going to go all the way, that road will go all the way through to Pillsbury. That'll be a, a four-lane boulevard, okay? And then they'll also uh, at the, simultaneously uh, be constructing the first phase of the new downtown. Uh, wow. That'll be part of Woodmont Commons uh, with a projected soft opening in the first quarter of 2017. Uh, so they're, they're really getting, yeah, the, getting down to business yeah. now. Things yeah. are moving. Um, and, and it's exciting because for a long time people mm -hmm. kept saying, well, you know, where's Woodmont? What's going on with it? Well, yeah, now people are it. starting to see stuff happening up mm -hmm. there. And, you know, people are saying, what's, what's the first phase of the downtown? Yeah. Um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's when people see the design, they see who's going in there. Um, you know, the, there'll be accessory dwellings available mm -hmm. as well as uh, the retail and commercial stuff. Uh, it's, it's exciting. So um, it's one of those things, stay tuned, it's coming. People are, you know, it's gonna start coming very quick, um, but, it's, but things are finally mm -hmm. happening up there. Well, I'm not gonna ask you to reveal any mysteries, but are there some stores that have already committed to going up there? Yes. 
cool. Yeah. That, and, make, that makes it move so much faster. Oh, absolutely that, it yeah. does. Absolutely yeah. it does because they now have deadlines they have to meet mm -hmm. in order to... Keep that tenant that they yes. want to have, yes. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. So... That does sound exciting. It I is. I hope it doesn't scare people. I hope everybody in the community can get behind it. Well, I think that we've had a long time to prepare for it now. You know, yeah. the planning process was three years. Then there mm -hmm. was the delays because of the Damula's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, battle. Um, so we've been hearing a lot about it. There's been a lot of talk about it. Yeah. So it's it's not like something that just is happening mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of people saying. Boy, is this ever going to happen? Yeah. You know what, yeah. what's going to happen? And like I said, it's when people see it, I think they'll be very excited mm -hmm. about it. Okay, I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Um, Musquash, mm. a shooting plan. What does that mean? Well, you know, so the town council um, a couple of months ago passed an ordinance mm -hmm. that says you can now uh, target shooting is is now prohibited except during hunting season. So you can target practice during hunting season? You can target practice during hunting season. and Because the animals become the target? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, because if you have to sight your firearm uh -huh. in order to hunt, then you gotta you got to do a little bit of target shooting okay. uh, because you're not always shooting at the animal. Okay. Uh, but that's the only time now. And so the signs are up at the trailheads uh, mm -hmm. to the musquash. Um, you know, I've, I've been checking in with the, the PD. What, what we have said is, look it, if you continue to hear target shooting going on in the musquash during non-hunting seasons, uh, call the police department um, because we now have an ordinance to enforce, mm -hmm. whereas we didn't before. Okay. Now we can do some enforcement. Um, that said, the calls have been very infrequent. Well, that said, yeah. how do I know what is being hunted and when? So uh, if you read the ordinance, mm -hmm. it says during what hunting seasons target mm -hmm. shooting is allowed. Okay. And then if you go on the Fish and Game website, you can look up to see mm -hmm. when the hunting seasons actually are for those. So I think in the ordinance, it, it tells you what hunting seasons. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you the actual dates, it just but it just says... Just deer hunting season. Exactly. Okay. And then you can go on Fish and Game and look to see okay. what the... Um, can, I, can the, I make a suggestion? Yes. What if uh, we had a link to that on our London Dairy That's a great suggestion. Website. Good suggestion, Dottie. Okay. I'll bring that back. Thank you. You're welcome. Because uh, I know I've, I've been hearing, um, I live in the North End, yep. and I've been hearing a lot of shooting going on out there. Yep. And they're <laughs> they can't be hunting because we're talking like a dozen rounds going off, like boom, 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 sure. just like that. So I'm wondering, are they target practicing somewhere? Do they think they're out hunting and yeah, they just don't know better? Right, yeah. <laughs> there may be a link to it on the conservation mm -hmm. uh, website, website, but I'll, I'll take a look. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, yeah. we'll put it up there so that people can you know, have a quick reference yeah. to know, okay, what, is, what are the dates of hunting season? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we can help to be the enforcers of the, the ordinance. That's right, so, absolutely. Because I know that has got to be a difficult task for the police department it is. alone. So. Yep, it is. Okay. But it's a, it's kind of a learning process for everybody right now. So I have one more thing that I wanted to discuss with you. Sure. Um, let's talk about rabbits. <laughs> Bunny rabbits. Yeah, rabbits. Um, the endangered species that exist in this community mm -hmm. in numbers that they don't exist in other communities. Yep. And uh, from what I read, we had an opportunity as a, as a town to be involved in uh, protecting that species mm -hmm. from becoming extinct. And I believe that the town council was being supportive of doing that. But then when the, when, <coughs> excuse me, frog in my throat, <coughs> when the school board discussed it, they were against it. Mm -hmm. And I think they took a, two votes on that mm -hmm. on two different occasions, and they're against it. Why? What would be well, the reason for the town council to approve it, and then it goes before the school board? Start so, there. Yeah, because I, I can't. Um, I mean, I can't speak for the school board mm -hmm. as to what the prevailing reasons were for why they didn't approve mm -hmm. it. But what I can talk about is. 
how this all came to be in, in That'd be what the great. town council did. I'd like did. to understand. Uh, New Hampshire Fishing Game was given a grant, uh, I believe by Eversource, mm -hmm. um, to do wildlife protection, um, in particular for certain species that um, are on the brink of extinction, mm -hmm. like the cottontail, New England cottontail right. rabbit. Um, and this has been, the, people may have heard a lot about this when Pettengill Road was first being built because mm -hmm. there was a potential for habitat up in that area. And uh, the, it almost, the New England cottontail almost got put on the federal endangered species list, which if that right. happened, it would have almost brought development to a complete halt up in that area because of the federal regulations mm -hmm. involved with it. So in order to keep them off of that list, mm -hmm. what the state did is they said, you know, we're gonna create all these habitats, habitats. in the area to show that, mm -hmm. look at, we're setting up habitats <laughs> so that these animals don't become extinct. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was the purpose of the plan they came up with for London Dairy, as they said, they identified parcels mm -hmm. of town-owned conservation land, uh, town and school, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, and basically they said, we wanna manage the land. It's not gonna cost the town anything. It's not gonna mm -hmm. cost the school anything. We're not, we're not looking to use your resources, but we'll, we wanna have the ability to manage the land so that it's mm -hmm. conducive for habitat for the cottontail. And did the Conservation Commission weigh in on this? Yes. And they would have been they in favor They were supportive, it? yeah. They I were supportive because so. they, they work hand in hand with yeah. New Hampshire Fish and Game. Uh, so long story short, the town council um, approved Mm -hmm. uh, of, of that plan uh, that was set up. Um, and the school board uh, did not give uh, approval mm -hmm. to for Fish and Game to manage their land uh, that they own behind the, the schools, behind the ball fields. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I, I don't know yeah. what those reasons were for why the school board made that decision, but Originally, it was all part of one memorandum of understanding between Fish and Game, mm -hmm. the school, and the town. Okay. When it became clear that the school may not be on board with it, they separated the uh, MOUs yeah. out yeah. so that there's a separate town one, a separate school one. So at least... So there will be some preservation be, correct, going of, on. Yeah, in town-owned okay. conservation okay. lands. Okay. Um, but the school one still, mm -hmm. at this time... Uh, remains well maybe they'll vote again maybe they, voted they will twice. maybe they'll vote again maybe they will um, i just think it would be an awesome experience for the kids to be involved in mm -hmm. to um, see that there are things that we can do on a local level that will have an effect on pre preserving these species before they become extinct and rabbits are so damn cute did i just swear on tv i did but it's public access i can do that you can do that Dottie. <laughs> Yes. I can do that. Kevin, is there anything? We've covered a lot of things trying to make up for lost time here. Is um, there anything else you can think of that you'd like to let people know about? The last thing I would maybe just about? say is, you know, I, I get a lot of people asking all the time, oh, what's being built here? What's being built there? Mm -hmm, this stuff. Mm -hmm. Very quick rundown of the yeah, ones I'm most absolutely. frequently asked yeah. about. Um, behind the mobile station at the intersection of 28 and Mammoth Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self-storage. That's what's going in there. Uh, it's nothing sexy, but, <laughs> you know, self-storage places, they make a lot of money, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a developer that purchased the land, and uh, that's what he's putting there. Um, near Fieldstone Drive, Mountain Home Estates, mm -hmm. there's two different projects going in on yeah. opposite sides of the road. One is uh, single-family homes. It's mm -hmm. all one lot, so the, uh, the acreage they're going on is, it's going to be a lot more dense. I think 29 homes are going in there, okay. but it's not your traditional acre lot, so they'll be closer than that, and they got a variance to do that. Now, why would they get a variance to do that? Uh, they wanted to put more homes on the lot than mm -hmm. what the ordinance... Oh, uh, I'm not saying why would they ask. I'm yeah. saying why would, they, why would we grant that? Um, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to go back and mm -hmm. look to see why the, I don't attend the zoning here. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're a quasi-judicial board, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I was the wondering. town, we don't try to influence oh, no, them one yeah, way or the other. Totally understood. As no, to why don't. they, yeah. they yeah. granted the variance, um, I'd, I'd have to go back yeah. and look I was at the wondering, minutes. I was just thinking maybe they had a, a common piece of property that abutted all the houses that made up for a little bit of... 
yeah. space there. Okay. So, um, but that's what's going in there. Across the street, mm -hmm. you have um, Whittemore Estates, which is, so the new development's kind of an extension of that. It'll mm -hmm. be age-restricted, 55-plus okay. homes going in there. Um, and then uh, along 102, uh, between Avandi's Restaurant mm -hmm. and Cafe Teresa, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of construction going on there. Those are... Um, it's a combination of uh, 55 plus apartments. Um, they're, I think, being built luxury apartments, mm -hmm. uh, age restricted, uh, but they're already taking leases mm -hmm. uh, for those. Um, they went out pretty quick. They're big buildings. Um, and then right in front of there will be an assisted living facility, All American Assisted Living Facility, mm -hmm. which uh, in when I attended the Elder Affairs Committee meeting earlier this week, there was a representative from there in talking about it, and they said the, the model they're using, it's, it's kind of a new dynamic model, uh, whereas it's called... Um, uh, co... How, I oh, forget I the name of it, yeah, but what it I, is is it's a... The residents in there, they have separate bedrooms, mm -hmm. but they share a common um, common area, mm -hmm. you know, living room, kitchenette, uh, bathroom, but have their own bedrooms mm -hmm. rather okay. than each resident Unit having, having a having, single yeah, one. Yeah, okay. And by doing that, their price point is significantly lower. I would think. I yeah. think for one person, uh, or no, they said for someone that's non-Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. the price point is, I think, 3200 mm -hmm. And if they are with uh, Alzheimer's, it's, uh, I want to say, like 5400 But those are, again, compared to most mm -hmm. assisted living homes, mm -hmm. It's significantly less yeah. uh, than what you would find today, uh, and um, they're they're full service, mm -hmm. twenty four hour full service uh, assisted living. Um, so, and it, it's exciting that as a town we have that to offer as yeah. well, because you've got a lot of baby boomers who are mm -hmm. retiring now who have parents that they want to keep in the area, and now there'll be an option in Londonderry mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. So. Okay. Lots going on. Lots There's going always on. Always a lot going on when yes. I talk to you. This, the town's just been crazy over the last couple of years with all of the new things that are coming. And with that, we'll wrap it up here. Sounds good. And I just want to remind everybody that this show's for you. So if you've got questions, send them in. Contact information is at the end of the uh, program. Um, we only deal with elected or appointed officials on transparency in government, and we'll get answers to your questions. But you are more than welcome to come on another show that we do called One Voice at a Time. And on that show, anybody can come on and talk about whatever they want to talk about. It can be for fun. It can be because they feel really strongly about something. They're passionate. Whatever you want to talk about. So... Again, you can call the same contact information for that, too, because um, I produced that show as well. So this is a little plug for another show that we do. And I'd like to put in a plug for the Londonderry Access Center itself, because as Kevin was talking at the beginning about um, what, what happened as a result of the flooding, I think people still don't know how much they can do here. Um, you can come in. You can be trained to be a camera person, work behind the scenes. You can host a program of your own. You can be on someone else's program if they agree. So I hope that you'll get in touch with us. I hope you'll see what a resource London Area Access Center is. And you have a fantastic director, Drew Karen, And you also have a wonderful trainer. And oh, also cable representative. Yeah, not cable representative. She is the representative for the cable company in that if you can't resolve situations with them on your own, you can contact her and she'll act on your behalf. So that being said, I'd like to say thank you. I'm so glad that you are watching. And if you want to watch some of the older shows, you can go on LACTV.com. And that's where they are. They'll all be there. So thank you. And we will see you. Let's see, when we're going to see you again? Four yes, weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks, I believe. I think right so. before Thanksgiving. Yep. Yep. So thank you for watching.
Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Dottie. Great job. Thank you.